Hi, everybody. This is your James Bond read-along book. Every time you hear this sound, it means that it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now we're just about ready to begin. Moonraker. Moonraker. And remember, turn the page every time you hear the sound. Well, well, Mr. Bond. We meet again, and for the last time. Since you have only just regained consciousness, I must tell you that you are in the exhaust pit directly under my starship, Moonraker 5. Shortly, I, Drax, will blast off for my new space station high above the Earth and proceed with my plan to poison the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, the blast off will blast you to ashes, Mr. Bond. It's a pity you will not be on hand to witness my creation of a new super race dominated entirely by the whims of Drax. I expect you are simply burning with jealousy. <laughs> Farewell, Mr. Bond. James Bond, Agent 007 of Her Majesty's Secret Service, is really in for it this time. But Bond has been in a thousand tight spots before, and he'll get out of this one too. He always does. Drax did not count on one thing. James Bond is a professional. Follow him now as he tangles with Drax and his villainous crew and tries to thwart Drax's master plan. Code word, Moonraker. I must remember to thank my secretary for reminding me to wear my wristwatch on this mission. The miniature explosives concealed under the band should fit right in this air vent. In about 15 seconds, Drax is going to be a short order cook I'll be the first dish on his menu. I'd better hurry. It worked. Now to get out of this pit. It's hotter than a microwave in here. I wonder where this shaft leads. Of course, from Moonraker 5 to Moonraker 6. Now's my chance to keep up with Drax. I can get a hold of one of his thugs without attracting too much attention. Uh, hey, astronaut, your boot's untied. One karate chop on the neck is worth two in the ribs. I'll just follow the rest of these astronauts into the launching chamber. What do I do now? James, we must be on a pre-arranged flight program. I'm in luck. There's Drax ahead of us, riding in Moonraker 5. Where are all these Moonrakers going? Great Scott! There it is now, a space station as big as a moon. But how can a satellite this big go unnoticed on the radar screens at NASA? Uh-oh. No time for questions now. We're getting ready to dock. I've got to make sure I stay in line and don't attract any unnecessary attention. But just then, Bond makes a false move. Hey, astronaut, you're at the end of the line. Where's your partner? Oh, he's right behind me, over here. With lightning speed, Bond spins and gives the astronaut a quick jab. Ha! Red alert! Red alert! Intruder encountered on landing stage. Repeat, intruder encountered on landing stage. Last scene running for interior of Drax station. Lower levels. Bond is in a fix now. He has only one chance, and that's to get a message to Earth and hold out until help arrives. Just then, Bond turns a corner and comes face to face with Drax. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
James Bond, hot on the trail of Drax, mastermind of the Moonraker plot, has made it as far as Drax's secret space station, high above Earth. But now, Drax's men have discovered Bond, and he is forced to make a break for it. Deep inside the lower levels of the station, Bond meets Drax himself, alone. I must say, Mr. Bond, you have the most unpleasant way of following one about, like a bad smell. I just follow my nose, Drax. <laughs> you will forgive me for finishing you off with a simple laser handgun. I haven't the time to arrange for a more imaginative death for you. I have more pressing matters to attend to. Such as? Since you have impressed me with your remarkable persistence, Bond, I will tell you. I was about to enter the door behind me, which leads to the central control room of the Drax station. From here, I will mastermind the release of poison gas all over the Earth, thus wiping out the entire human race. Then I will be free to create my super race. It will never work, Drax. NASA is sending space shuttles crammed with United States Marines straight for this station, even as we speak. <laughs> really, Mr. Bond? You expect me to believe such a thin story? This space satellite cannot be detected from Earth. In the room behind me lies the most sophisticated radio jamming device known to man. But no, Mr. Bond. It has been my pleasure. Goodbye, and good riddance. How long do I have to live, Drax? I don't have a watch, Mr. Bond. But I give you about five seconds. But why don't you consult your own watch? I will, Drax. Let's see. Five seconds isn't long for me to live, but plenty of time for you to die. Before Drax can react, a poison-tipped dart strikes him in the chest. Oh, oh, you! What did you? You oh. really ought to check into my line of wristwatches, Drax. But now, if you will kindly step this way into the ejector compartment. Within seconds, Drax finds himself shut tight in a small compartment designed to eject waste. One touch of Bond's finger and... Take a giant step for mankind. <laughs> Your insane dream is over, Drax. But I have other things to think about. Now to get to that radio jamming device before somebody gets to me. This laser handgun should come in handy. Let's see how it does against the control panels. But first, I must break in. With a lunge, James Bond is in the central control room. Some very startled technicians back away from the control panels as Bond fires at the mechanisms. Soon the panels begin to crackle and explode, and the room is flashing red, white, and blue colors like weird lightning. Bond is on the loose. Radio jamming control failing. Prepare to board Moonrakers for evacuation of track station. Repeat. Board Moonrakers for evacuation of track station. They should be picking us up loud and clear at Mission Control in Houston. Now that the jamming system is out of order, soon the Marines will be on hand to pick up the Moonrakers that are trying to escape. Without Drax, they're nothing. Well, I must say, I've learned how useful a wristwatch can be. My secretary is in for a promotion. A few hours later, James Bond looked out of a porthole of the Drax station. 
he spied the familiar emblem of the United States Marines as a fleet of their shuttles rounded up the stray moonrakers and arrested their crews. He also saw something else. Far in the distance, through hundreds of miles of interplanetary space, a small blue orb was glowing. Bond would be there soon, because it was Earth, so small and lost in the huge unknown galaxy. But for James Bond, it was home. 